What's up? Hello, welcome back to my channel. Peter Parker Comics here. Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't done a video in a long time. I have been letting my new comics kind of build up, make it worth it, and then I just get too lazy and don't want to do it. So, they're still sitting here. I still have like a month, month and a half's worth of stuff to show off to you guys. I haven't put it away yet. But it's all sorted and ready to go. Patty cake, patty cake, fuck you. Um, cool, so... Uh, this video will be a comic call, but it will not be any, um, new stuff. Well, there's a couple of new things in here. Back issues. This is all back issues. Um, some mail calls I got. It's a pretty decent stack. Um, I think a few things I might have even shown in my previous video I did. I've just had a stack of books, like PC books, have just been sitting over there building up. And that's what these are. Um, oh, there's more, actually. Goes over there. And then I got a magazine to show off, and a book. So, I will try to fly through all this as fast as I can, and then get to my new stuff. So, stay tuned, uh, make sure you're following me, subscribed, uh, set those post notifications, whatever. I don't know how it works on YouTube. But just uh, stay tuned or come back for more. I'll have more, more videos soon. I hope. Maybe. It's a possibility. Don't count on it. Anyway, let's get kick this kick this show. Building up some saliva here. Let's kick this shindig off and show off some sweet, funny books. All right, God, I need to really need to work on everything. Work on myself. I want you guys to see my sweet statues. It's Doctor Strange over here. You guys see that Doctor Strange trailer? It looks good. That Doctor Strange spec. Um, okay, so this first stack of the uh, books is all uh, in the mouth covers. I don't know if you guys have been following me, watching my videos for a while now. I try. I usually get one in like every video, but those books where a character is in the mouth of something, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I got probably a, a whole long box and then another like short box full of them. So I keep saying I'm gonna eventually do a whole video where I. Show off, show them all off, and do nothing but the in the mouth books. But who knows? We'll see. I'm a lazy piece of shit. So, um, got text. Leave me alone. I'm busy. So, I got showed you that one. Perfect example. A character in the mouth, holding the mouth open of something, preferably. That's what started this whole thing. Was like, there's a couple. I had like a Batman, a Superman, and a Wonder Woman book where they're all like in a T Rex mouth, kind of holding it open. I'm like, that's so cool. And then I'd find another one. Oh, he's in the mouth. Of, he's in the mouth of a creature. Oh, check out. And it was just, I couldn't stop. And it hit a point where it was like, there can't be that many more left. I probably have most of these. Let's just keep, let's just get all the ones I find now. <sighs> Boy, was I wrong. Because uh, there's just so many. Especially if you loosen the parameters and just say, like, them holding, like, hey, his, his arm is in the mouth. That, that counts. Yeah. This is actually Art Churn, Captain Adam book. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Even says, in the mouth of madness. Yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, John Carpenter. But then you get even crazier with something like this. Transformers Beast Wars. Like, well, I mean, you know, his, some of his fingers there are sort of by those teeth. It, it counts. He's kind of trying to hold that mouth open. Fuck it. This is where it gets real, really, uh, Real, real, really, really real. It's really, uh, what's the word? Pushing it. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess maybe his fingernail is kind of in that mouth. His tongue is, ra is like wrapping around his arm there. His tongue's part of the mouth, right? Ugh, that's pushing it. <laughs> that's a uh, side tech issue too, right? Yeah, side tech. I don't know. And yeah, stuff like this where it's like, oh, his mouth. He's a cavern, and he's in the cavern, so he's in the mouth. Uh, there's, I do need to do that video where I show off all the other ones, because there's some crazy ones that were just like, really? You bought that for that? <laughs> um, but I love those. That's, that's a big thing I collect. It gets me to buy a lot of books I normally wouldn't buy. That's for sure. Um, so let's show off the sweet book I got. It's Tales from the Crypt, uh, Volume 1. The, uh, the EC Archives. Archives, whatever you want to say it. It's got a forward by John Carpenter. Oh, I just mentioned him, didn't I? I got Carpenter on the brain. This is cool. Um, 
I have a few EC books, reprint things. I don't think... I have, like, the Tales from the Crypt Encyclopedia. And I... I think I maybe have the issue one or a couple of these reprinted in something. But I think this is the first, like, my first volume one of Tales from the Crypt that I have. So, I jumped all over it. Especially because, included in all this, are... You guys get to see one. You can see... The books reprinted there, really cool. It includes the Tales from the Crypt Crypt Corner, by the way, which is cool. That's very cool. But it also includes the covers. And you get these big blown up, like, uh, forward pages or, well, I don't know, it's like an extra page. Um, but you get the covers. Lots of reprint books do not include the covers, especially like the Marvel, like Milestone, not Milestone, the, the Masterworks. Uh, the Essentials, they usually don't put the covers in them. I, th I think, in general, most comic book reprinted books, they leave out the covers. I don't know if it's just to save money on the, the one page they leave off. Or what causes it, but usually they don't put the covers in. And that annoys me, because I like the covers. And what's cool about this, this is like, this book's about pretty much magazine size. Um, the old pre-code horror books were bigger than most, bigger than your average comic is today. A um, little bit wider and whatnot. Not quite this size. This is kind of blown up. So, it, I mean, yeah, you get to see the covers and a lot of the art in here at a bigger perspective than you normally would have, I guess. More detail. But if you were a crazy cat like I am, I'm really thinking about cutting all these out, getting like an X-Acto knife and cutting out the pages, the cover and the pages with it, and then I can put this in a magazine bag and board and be like, oh, I've got the first. Cut this one out. Say, oh, i got the first Tales from the Crypt comic. Uh, I know some people that would be like unheard of. Why would you, why would you do that? Um, why would you damage it? Why would you, why would you want just to, you know, it's not the same. I mean, for a lot of people, this book would probably run you tens of thousands of dollars. So, and if you're talking about doing this to like a Hulk one or an FF one, Amazing Fantasy 15, there's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands to get that book. So if I could spend 20 bucks, actually with a discount it was like 15. I could spend 15, you know, buy a little knife, magazine bag and board. I can cut all these up, you know, crop them appropriately. Make them as like thin as possible without cutting into the art. Put them in a bag and board. It's going to have pretty much the same thickness. It's just going to look like I have mint condition copies of, you know, some old fucking classics. Without breaking the bank. So I'm thinking about it. I might not. I might just, you know, leave them in here and enjoy it. But it's just cool. And that was, uh, uh, originally Tales from the Crypt was not Tales from the Crypt. It was Crypt of Terror. And that was issue 17, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 17, 18, 19. And then it jumps to Tales from the Crypt at 20. So you get 20, 21, 22. Uh, just pretty fucking cool. I'm pumped to have this. And again, it's got a forward by John Carpenter. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, I don't know. Just a thought. Just an idea. It's, uh, I've done it for a few, like, old Golden Age books that I just don't, I don't want them that bad. Like, I, I would like to have them. If I could get it for, like, a couple bucks, under 10 or 20, sure. I have, like, a replica version of it, facsimile. Great. But I'm not gonna pit, I'm not gonna break the bank and have to, like, mortgage my house. I don't even have a house. Um, and take out a fucking big-ass loan to pay for some expensive paper I don't really care about. So it's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a possibility. It's an option. Okay, it's an option. Um, I picked this up for cover. I'm gonna sell it. It is the uh, Immortal Hulk number four, the FF variant month. All the different FF teams and uniforms got a uh, got a variant cover. This is the Arthur Adams team, the Art Adams team. He did this cover as well. Looks fucking awesome. Um, and I think they're bringing them back. I heard yeah, like next month, Marvel's gonna bring back the old uh, Wolverine, Hulk, Ghost Rider, Spider Man, Fantastic Four team. So they're kind of hot right now, so I'm going to be selling this one. And this copy, despite needing a bag and board, is pretty minty fresh, so... Fuck yeah, that's cool. Look at that. Look at the detail. Got the Mole Man back there, and all of his, uh... M moloids, whatever the hell they're called. The Subterraneans. Subterraneites. Subterraneans. And the fucking the big Mole Man creature, was it Giganto? I think? Gigant... That sounds right. Giganto. I'm going to stick with that. Giganto. Who I think is a her. Because there is at least a 
cartoon where it had a baby. It was like a baby one, and I'm like, oh, it's it's mom, it's a mom, oh, it's a girl. What? Ah! Hey man, that character is as old as the FFR. She one was the debut of all of that stuff. I like Mole Man. Mole Man's cool. Hans Mole Man. That's wrong. I got Long Shot here. Another bad guy. Long Shot number six. This is the first cover appearance of Mojo and I think Spiral. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, Mojo's first is like Long Shot number three, which that book has shot up in price. I presume for that reason. I don't know if we'll see Mojo in a movie or anything like that soon. I'm down for that. Bring me Mojo, Arcade, Moses Matt, Moses Magnum. I think I said that right. Or uh, Unis, Unis, the Untouchable. Those would be some cool villains I'd like to see. Don't do Magneto again. Don't do the obvious ones. Mimic would be cool. Mesmero is, has a lot of potential. That's just mind control, right? All right. I'll talk about this later. Doctor Strange! It's a Loki variant there. This is the uh, Loki Sorcerer Supreme um, on the cover, at least. I don't think that happens until an issue or two later, but this is the Donny Cates Doctor Strange. Uh, and it's the first appearance of Bats the Dog, who then I think dies in <laughs> this issue or the next issue and comes back as Bats the Ghost Dog. That's a cool book. Good spec book, I guess. I don't know if you guys can even hear this. Um, I might have showed this off last video. It's a uh, static number four with the uh, Akira, Akira, the Akira homage. Could not resist that. Um, Cobalt number one. No, another Marvel. What is it called? Not Marvel. Milestone edition. DC. It's a DC comic. I'm just trying to think of what the fucking thing was called. All the black, the black superheroes, the black comics, I guess. Um, they did like Static, Blood Syndicate, Icon, Hardware, Cobalt, there's another one, Zombie, I think there's another one I'm missing. I don't know, I like that, I like those. Um, the Milestone books and Spawn were like, and Usagi were like the first comics I ever bought myself off, like new off the rack in the early 90s. I was a little, little baby, practically. Um, but from there, after getting a few, of the, a few of each of those, I then got into, like, going through the dollar bins that that shop had. A shop I still go to to this day. But as a little, like, I guess toddler, the very first comics I ever picked off the rack, oh, I was older than that, I guess. Whatever, as, like, a seven- or eight-year-old. Um, first books I ever bought off the rack was a static book. There was this... Uh, spawn something. Spawn two or three. Because um, it took me a while to get a one. And then some Usagi from the Mirage Studio run. Yeah, those are my first comics. And I always thought like Blood Syndicate was so fucking cool. Um, I had a hardware book. I never had a Cobalt. I never even knew this existed until recently. Um, but yeah, I had a few Blood Syndicate hardware and static books. And I thought those were just the coolest fucking things. And then... Well, Five, ten years later, they did that Static show. And since then, Static has always been, like, if not my favorite, he's, like, top two, top three DC characters for sure, but almost just superheroes in general. I love, 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 love Static. Big fan. Uh, Virgil. Static Shack. Virgil Hawkins. Um, so, anyway, moving on. I just, I recommend those. I recommend people get the Milestone books. They, DC just brought back the comics recently. I think they're doing, like, they're trying to do, like, a streaming thing, eventually. Set up that universe. Alright, uh, what does this even say? The Gamma Rodders. This is, like, take three of this video, and each time it took me a minute to fucking read this. The Gamma Rodders, that's just a DC number one I didn't have, and you know, you gotta have every number one. Uh, Journey into Mystery 503. This is issue one of Lost Gods, because 502, the previous issue, is the final issue of Thor. So, he got Lost Gods for a few issues, and dealt with uh, the original, the redhead, redhead Thor. Um, like the Thor of Norse legend, whatever. Uh, and uh, Seth 
can't think of any other names of these fucking guys. And then after that, they did uh, Black Widow and Shang-Chi each had their own like solo run on Journey to Mystery for a couple issues. I recommend checking those out. Got Captain America Patriot number one. Has like a foil shiny trade dress. Kind of cool. I like that. Here's a Usagi book. Usagi Ojimbo. Uh, I like this because it's just uh, it's 56. Um, it's a like just a it's a dual cover. It's like one of those showdown covers. I love takes on that. I got first appearance of Livewire here. That's cool. I got Lobo number one. This is Lobo's back. This is back. Lobo is back. Lobo's back. Lobo's back. Get it? Bite me, fanboy. This is one I've never owned. I have a I have a Lobo number one. I have his first appearance in Omega Men. Two, three, two, three. It's three. Two. Three. I think it's three. Should be three. It's three. It's three. Um, but I've never had this one. And then they've done homages to it before. And uh, I think Crush even recently had one with her. <laughs> Crush is back or something like that. I was like, what? But they've kind of... Evil Ernie maybe, maybe had one. I've, I've seen homages to this. Um, this is Simon Bisley. This is the Biz. Sonic 100. I like those anniversary issues. I got a Gotham by Gaslight. First time owning that. And again, these are all most likely, for the most part, PC books. I'm keeping them. They were bought for me. Thicken up my collection. Some Sam Keith. Toxic Crusaders. This is issues one, two, three, four. Um, I have two and three. I will sell two and three. Eat me! But one and four are for me to keep, and then I think there's a five, and I don't know how long it went after that, but I'm going to try to get the whole run. There's Toxic Crusaders and Toxic Avenger. Fuck yeah, man. Pumped to have those. Put those there. I got this book called Gene Dogs. This is, uh, okay, I'm not even gonna try. I was gonna make a stupid pants joke. Gene Dogs, number one. Uh, Flash Gordon, number one. From Marvel. Didn't know Marvel had a Flash Gordon. Captain Marvel, number one. Something. From the 90s. This would have been like, what? Wait. No. It says 60 years of Marvel superheroes. That would make this like 2001, not 91. This came out in 2000. How's that possible then? Oh, they're counting the, the 40s. Okay, 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 okay. So, like, Marvel started in like 61. What are you talking about? So, yeah, that would be right then. Cool. And this is probably a different... Um, this is Jan Janus Bell. Janus... It just says genus, genus. But I believe he is known as like Marvel. This is like Janus Vell. Genus, genus. Start with a G. Genus. Genius without the U, because you ain't no genius. You a fool. You're crazy. Crazy. I'm talking myself, because I can see myself in the, in the phone. Alright. There, that guy. Pow. Also picked up. I got. I'm running out of time here. Mutant X. I only got this because it's sort of slightly, just barely, I guess, an homage to FF1, and I do collect those as well. Another Giganto appearance. It's basically just this is the homage of it. It's cool, 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 cool. Nocturne, number one. It's cool. Uh, I have this Iron Man 25. Classic fight with Submariner. Mariner? Mariner? Namor, the Submariner. Fucking awesome. I like this. Cool, 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 cool. And then these I showed previously. Um, First Enchantress. I showed these in my last video for sure. Because I was talking about how I think there might be mold in there. And I'm in the process of finding someone I can send these to and have them see what they can do. Try to kind of lift some of that out of there and kill a lot of the that 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 stuff going on 
And I got this first cover appearance of the Living Tribunal. Strange Tales 158. And I got two copies of it, actually. This one's got some stainage going on. So those are cool. Um, I'm going to see what kind of work I can do on those. Bring those back to life. And I got this sweet run of Nightbreed. One, two, three, four, and five. And six. So I got a nice little hefty run of Nightbreed. Dr. Decker. Cool. So that's my books. Hey, that's uh, Cronenberg in the, in the movie portraying Decker. And this is a Cronenberg shirt. Shivers. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. I gotta go. I'm running out of time. So go watch some of my other videos. Stay tuned for more. Peace!